thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here. Let me quickly uh, speak about uh, NL. No? Our group, of course, we are present in 32 countries uh, covering the full value chain no? from generation to, uh, to uh, distribution retail. Of course, a big player in renewables, as you probably know, with over uh, 10 gigawatts uh, installed capacity in the renewable part. But today I will be speaking about the grid part, let's say, and also the relationship about smart grids smart meters with, uh, let's say, environment and also the, the sustainability at the end. So within NL, we are present in eight countries. We serve um, over 60 million uh, houses. That means like probably roughly 180 million people in the world uh, get energy through us, through our grids. And we are present in, in, in uh, eight countries. A big part here in Europe, but also in Latin America. Of course, mainly as you in, within Europe, as you probably know, we are present in uh, Italy and the main player there. We are also main DSO in Spain, present in Romania, and also then in, in South America, as I said before. In, uh, of course, and you probably heard this in the past, let's say NL was a really, a, let's say, a, an early starter with the smart metering. NL started no, in the, at the beginning of the last uh, decade, uh, with the, uh, at the beginning of uh, the 2000-2001, no, with the rollout of full smart metering in Italy. And I will speak a bit about this because we, of course, continue to roll out smart metering because that's part of our vision for smart grids of today and also tomorrow. So smart metering in Italy is today a complete reality. It's been, been operated now for now 15 years. And we're actually looking and we are planning next year to start again the rollout no, of, the, of the next uh, generation smart metering in Italy. At the same time, we have in Spain an ongoing rollout. By the end of this year, we will have 6.8 million meters uh, alone in Spain. Uh, also installed smart meters. And um, of course, we are also looking at uh, our Latin American uh, countries, Romania as well, uh, with, for smart metering. But smart meters at the end are just one piece, no, are an enabling piece. Looking at the grid perspective, I will not speak today about the consumers, which is of course a very relevant aspect, but I want to focus here on the, on the grid. The smart meter at the end is of course an, a measurement device no, at the end point of the grid, so it gets you information about the energy flows, which is very important. It's bidirectional measurement. It helps to control the grid as well, because we also have capability of limiting the power in, uh, at the end points. And all of this at the end are sensors that, and actuators that come together with other elements in the grid that help us to control the grid uh, much uh, faster and in a more detailed and more efficient way. This goes together with smart grids. If, you, if we look at our grids, overall we have over 1.9 million kilometers of lines no, with 1 million secondary substations. So it's a, a really huge grid at, uh, at taking all the grids no, of uh, the NL group together. In Italy alone, for example, let's say we um, have a completely automated 30% of our secondary substations. And uh, with, that means remote control of those substations, also with the self-healing uh, mechanisms implemented. And this had a big impact on the quality of supply. We were able to reduce the durations, the yearly minutes no, of duration per customer by 60%, also through that in combination with the smart meters. Of course, that's, that's not um, all. You also today, with the integration of renewables, of course, other things come into play. We have uh, like really bi-directional energy flows. Storage is another very important point. Now we have an experience also in Italy uh, alone uh, of over eight megawatt hours of uh, storage then installed. And then energy management, you know, that comes and say you go further at the end. If you have the grid controlled at the end, the grid, the, the customer grid at the end becomes also part of the grid, you know, with uh, prosumers, of course, with 
uh, let's say, more active uh, devices, active demand. So managing also the, uh, the, the buildings, help to manage the buildings and the devices is very relevant. Microgrids is another part, no, that so we have, uh, of course, not only off-grids, but like on-grid, hybrid, on-off-grid microgrids, no, it's very important. And as a distribution grid operator, we need to look at this. Electric mobility, at the end, as a grid, you're an enabler for electric mobility. You have uh, charging poles. And if we look at smart metering again, for us, in our vision, um, if, uh, we have meters in this charging pole. So, of course, it's a, at the end, you need to measure, you need to allow also different um, suppliers of the energy for the electrical pole, so uh, electric charging pole. So you need to have a meter inside as well. And the meter at the end inside that measures bi-directional helps also for more advanced uh, charging schemes, smart charging and so on. Smart lighting, of course, for us also very important. In total, we have 3.5 million lighting points in all our grids that we can uh, control and manage. And we're now also applying new control technologies to that so that we start, let's say, controlling the lighting in a more efficient way. So that goes also together. At the end, everything comes together with a smart meter, one being one part. Uh, you put together sensors, actuators to control uh, the grid in a more efficient way. Distribution generation management, of course, even uh, including uh, dispatching mechanisms. And all of this at the end, if you take it together, you need, let's say, a, a good communication. You need sensors, actuators. You need also then management capabilities of the data in order to be able to make use of that data for optimizing the grid. Very quickly, the impact on renewable integration. Those are figures here from Italy uh, where there's a uh, over 580,000 uh, connected generators already in the grid uh, with a 26 uh, gigawatt of distributed generation. And if you look at the graph on the right side, you see the difference between uh, just a summer day between uh, 2010 to 2013. And you see that they are already there. Was a, let's say, a change. If you look at the, the, uh, at the upper lines and the lower lines, there's about 30% of a reduction of a uh, power that we uh, was requested from the traditional generation due to the um, due to the uh, renewables. So of course this has a big impact. We have uh, also experienced a big increase in reverse energy flows at our transformers. So uh, uh, due to the micro genera uh, micro and uh, and distributed generation. Another bi big thing I think will be vehicles in general. No, the electric vehicles. And of course, if we look here at the end, the, as a vehicle, as some storage at the end that you have in the grid and a consumer, so it becomes a consumer and a prosumer as well, no? a, a vehicle. And the same, of course, uh, with the buildings. If you take all of this together, this needs to be managed because it has an impact on the grid. And we should not forget about this no? when we speak about meters as an enabler, but at the end, also, you need the, the, the meters and other mechanisms in order to manage the grid, in order to uh, really build and assure the reliability and uh, sustainability of the grid that you need with a sufficient quality really for this electrification of, of everything no, at the end. No? So for us, really, the smart grids enables microgrids, enables smart cities, energy management, uh, there's flexibility, storage, using the vehicles, uh, vehicle to grid, building to grid, dispatching, of course, of uh, distributed generation, public lighting control. On the other side also, which is interesting at the end, you, know, you have a kind of a good synergy between renewables and the grid. You need a smarter grid in order to be able to manage uh, the grid well in, like, uh, in order to enable this renewable integration. On the other side, this additional intelligence that you put in the grid through meters, through other control devices, at the end also enables, let's say, uh, that more sustainability because you do things remotely. You, uh, you create less, even less transport, let's say, of, of your staff, of the customer. Everything is done remotely in an automated manner. So it also helps in this direction. And of course, the other part already mentioned, the enabling, the, let's say, the green transportation. We firmly believe that really uh, electric mobility at the end is a key driver 
also for sustainability. And of course, you need a, the, the grid to be prepared for this smart meter. You are now, I think, mainly speaking today here about the smart meter rollout, of course, is one key factor for this. And in addition to this, of course, you need to also think about all the other elements you have in the grid that you need to put together in order to make this, uh, this work. You know? And uh, we always hear about the new technologies like Internet of Things, uh, cloud computing, edge computing, and so on. And it is becoming a reality. We experience it in our grids. And I think uh, the same will happen here, is happening here. And those new technologies at the end enable things in a, any faster way every day. So this is from my side, a short vision on what is, let's say, the, the grid aspect on the meter that many times I think is, is a little bit neglected because, of course, the main issue is we focus on the customer. No? So thank you very much.